Hi, this is Eva from the Essential Guide to Digital Jewelry Design, and in this tutorial we'll be looking at one of the tutorials, one of the exercises in our book, the intermediate bow ring. This is both a rhino and a grasshopper tutorial, and today we're going to do this in Rhino for Mac and have a look at the grasshopper interface in Rhino for Mac. If you've downloaded the file from Gumroad, you will see that the uh, layer structure is already set up for your um, Rhino objects as well as your grasshopper objects. And here we have just the basic set of geometry that we need to create the bow ring. We have the two side, bow, uh, two side ribbons and the main top ribbon. What we're going to do in this tutorial is we are going to look at how to create these uh, side pieces and then how to place stones, cutters and prongs on that surface as well. In Rhino for Mac, you'll see there's a little grasshopper icon, just like on Rhino for PC. If you click that, grasshopper will open. And uh, I've already opened my file. And in my first algorithm, what I've got is as a couple of curves. Now, if we look back at the Rhino file on the side window, uh, on Rhino behind our, our, our grasshopper window, uh, we will see there's a layer called Curve 1, Curve 2, and Curve 3. In Curve 1, we see there is a rail curve with five profile curves. That is what's going to make up the first surface that we're going to sweep with one rail in Grasshopper. Uh, this Curve 2 layer, same thing. And finally, the Curve 3 layer will be a sweep two rail in Grasshopper with two rail curves and three profile curves. So looking at the Grasshopper window, we have one curve parameter uh, that is uh, already been input with um, our rail curve from our curve one layer. And just below that, we have the five profile curves. Each one of them has its own curve parameter uh, components. And these are being fed into the merge component, which we have, which we flattened on the output in order to feed into our rebuilt curve component. The rebuilt curve component you will find in your curve dropdown uh, toolset in Grasshopper under your utilities. In the degree, we've used a panel component to input a curve degree of three. We have 22 points on each curve uh, in our rebuilt curve component. And under our, um, under our uh, uh, sweep component, which we have taken from the surface freeform drop-down menu, we have input the rail curve and the profile curves and on our right we can see the result of our sweep one rail in Grasshopper. Let's bake that out into one of our layers. We're going to need that later in NURBS format in freeform and we're just going to pop it into the surface GH layer and let's see, I've already done that, so if I open up my Surface GH layer, I can see here all my surfaces are already available. And you'll notice that the surfaces are NURBS. That's because we built them with the Grasshopper Surface toolset as opposed to the Grasshopper Mesh toolset. When you bake that out, it gives you the results in whichever... Uh, geometry you happen to build it in. So we go to our next set of curves and that's curve 2, layer curve 2. Same thing as in the first algorithm. We have the curve input with our rail curve and we have our curve inputs with our five profile curves.
flatten the output into our rebuild curve component. Now, we could use a different number of points in our profile curves on our rebuild, uh, our rebuild input. Uh, for instance, uh, a control point count of four or eight. And have a look at what result we have in our surface, but you'll see here that you'll lose your corners and you'll have something that looks a bit more like a slug. We leave it at 20 for the moment, but you can experiment with that. So let's go to our last re uh, sweep, and that'll be a sweep to rail. So we have two curve inputs for our uh, rail one and rail two, and we will have the three profile curves, and that will be that will be our surface for the top of our ring. What we're going to do is we're going to start with a rectangular curve, planar curve, and we are going to make a planar boundary surface out of it. On that planar boundary surface, we're going to create a grid of points. Um, we will create that grid of points by um, making a, a, um, a range, two ranges, one for our x and one for our y direction. Uh, you'll find that under your sets and sequence drop-down menu. And uh, for this purpose uh, and for the, the scale of our objects, this 30 and, and 11 were sufficient. And we're going to evaluate the boundary surface uh, using our control points. Within this boundary surface, we are going to create a second curve, planar curve, and this planar curve will be um, the, the curve that determines where on our surface the stones will be lying. And first of all, we will cull a few points using our panel tool and a true-false statement. That will minimize the amount of points we have. And the second step will be culling all the points outside of our allocated surface in order to place that onto our ring. So we're using our cull components. And points within curves, closed curves, to determine which points to keep and which to uh, leave out. If we wanted to change the step order of our stones and we could use the, uh, the, the true-false statement to, to create a pattern and depending on the way the pattern is made and depending on which step order you use for your true and false statements, you will have a step repeat of your points on your surface.
And the final step is orienting our stones onto our points on the surface. So we will go back to the original planar boundary surface and use that as our starting geometry in our SPORF component. The SPORF component you'll find under transform. And the geometry are the points that we have now narrowed our set down to. We'll use a starting orientation of 0, 0, 0 on, on this geometry. And as our orientation geometry, <clears throat> our surface flow geometry, we'll be using the uh, surface that we baked out previously, which we'll be inputting into a um, surface component, a reparameterized that surface component, and our starting point there will be at 110. We'll be using surface to closest point to surface in our surface analysis drop down menu. And using the surface and the evaluate surface component, we will now have planes oriented to the normal of our surface at our points on the surface. And that will be our orientation for um, that will be our orientation point for our gem, for our cutter, and for our prong using the orient component. For the prongs, be sure to graft uh, the frames so that it groups the four prongs together as one object. Uh, otherwise, you will have only one prong orienting on your surface. And there you have a simple setup to create a nice NURPS freeform surface in Grasshopper and to lay out some stones. Hope you enjoyed that and hope you found it useful.